Hi, my love, Shay here. As I've promised, I'm starting to do, uh, on Saturday mornings, I'm going to do a herbal live. So I'm going to talk to you about herbal uh, remedies, herbal medicines. Ashwagandha is fantastic. It's one of my favorite herbs to recommend. And much to my shock and surprise, I actually saw it advertised on pill form, in pill form on TV the other day. Um, I've been telling people about ashwagandha easily for 25 years. It's one of the sacred Ayurvedic herbs and it has heaps of uses, but not what they said on the commercial on TV. It is a general tonic. It is considered to be Indian ginseng because it, it's good for so many things. But the reason why it's good for so many things is its basic function is that it is a hormone balancer. Now, if you have a look on PubMed, you can quite easily, last time I looked, I located 216 studies on its hormonal balancing properties. I don't know why they're not telling people about this, but again, like everything else that's um, uh, wonderfully useful in a medical, a herbal medical tradition, I guess they're trying to isolate the active components so that they can uh, register it and make money out of it. But um, I mean, well, we saw that with valerian. Valerian, they take the active components out of it, make Valium, and and we have a whole generation of housewives in the 60s and 70s that were well, very poor parents because, you know, the doctors, as soon as they were under stress, gave them Valium. Whereas if they'd used the valerian, there would have been a more balanced reaction. Anyway, we're not here to talk about valerian. We'll do that next time. We're going to talk about ashwagandha. So ashwagandha... Um, I found it useful for things like um, people, well, I share it with people and they have found it useful for things like um, menopause, menstruation, puberty, you know, when you want to strangle your kids because they're just being insane and you don't know why. Puberty is such a hard time for kids and I don't know why adults don't remember. I wouldn't be 17, 16, 15, 14, 12 to 17 horrid years. All of these new emotions start running around in your body. And why? Because as puberty kicks in, stimulates your pineal and your pituitary glands, your psychic abilities open, you become far more aware of what people are thinking and feeling around you. You're trying to cope with all your new social skills and you've got all of these hormones inciting new emotions in you. Right? You're experiencing you know, erotic love for the first time and experimenting with that. And, you know, and at the same time, your skin breaks out, you can't sleep properly, your sleep cycle changes. All of these things are triggered by your hormones. And then if you go to rave parties right, and then have Ekkies as well, which I never did. I was sort of the generation after me. But the Ekkies will muck around your hormones as well. That's what ecstasy tablets were designed to do. Did you know that ecstasy was originally designed by the military as a crowd control substance? They were, they were supposed to spray it into the air as a crowd control substance to make everybody lovey and huggy. But the thing is, when you muck around with your serotonin, melatonin levels, which these blue flashing light screens also do, which makes you stay awake a lot at night, it's very hard to get those hormones to balance up again. Ashwagandha helps with that. And uh, kids that are suffering with the Tuesday blues after going to a rave party the night before have found ashwagandha really useful in helping restore that hormonal balance of the serotonin melatonin levels. M menopause and menstruation, you know, it's just a godsend. If you're suffering from hot flashes, you know, traditionally Ayurvedically, it is one of the best things that you can do. And I can tell you in my personal case, uh, with the ashwagandha, I got one hot flush, started taking the ashwagandha, and I really do not suffer from it. I remember my mother, my adopted mother, suffering terribly from hot flashes and hot flushes. Yeah, I don't get them. In, right, that are suffering infertility, erectile dysfunction, and male midlife crisis as well. You know, men, I'm sorry to tell you this, but you have hormones too, and a lot of guys forget this. Right? Women, our hormonal cycle is very obvious because we from puberty have a 28 day cycle you know, on average. When I very first got my period, it was a 21 day cycle. Right? And if I'd had ashwagandha then, that would have helped even out that cycle for me. But um, men have a 60 day cycle. 
So women, if you've noticed that your man gets a bit aggressive every two months, that's because of his 60 day cycle. I'm sure he doesn't enjoy being like that either. It is very easy to help take. So what ashwagandha does is it's, uh, it talks to the nervous system. It, it communicates with the nervous system and where we have hormonal highs and hormonal, these are what the studies say. This is not me saying it. This is what those 216 studies have come to the conclusion of. That where we have the hormonal highs and the hormonal lows, what ashwagandha does is it seems to take the top and the low off those highs so that it brings the body back to a nice balance, which a lot of antidepressants try to do, but they force the hormones in, into a direction so far that people don't experience emotion. You don't get that side effect with ashwagandha. You just don't get the extremes that come with a hormone fuel boost of emotion. Um, but men with erectile dysfunction, I have seen them at Mind Body Spirit festivals where they've come self-treated, bought some ashwagandha off me and then haven't seen them for a couple of years. They run into me two years later, three years later, hug me, kiss me because it really changed their life in such a positive way. All right, and that's what we're looking for. Things with our herbal treatments, our food becoming our medicine so that it enhances our life instead of damaging our life. So many things in our packet foods today muck around with our hormonal cycle. There are so many hormones put into foods these days. You know, you've got to start becoming a, a label reader if you're going to look after your health and try and avoid things that have hormones in it because it's going to knock you around emotionally as well as physically. Nearly all of the major functions within our body are triggered by hormonal reactions, including diabetes, right? The uh, reaction of the adrenals, right? That brings about the, um, the sugar intolerance within our system that leads to diabetes is because of the packet foods being over dosed with sugar Right, which was, then leads to a hormonal imbalance. And some people who have diabetes have found that the use of ashwagandha really assists them to bring that hormonal level back up where their um, bodies are again coping with uh, the sugar that get in their diet. And uh, you can tell I'm trying to be very politically correct about talking about this, but we all know why people become diabetic. Sugar affects the hormones that metabolize that um, metabolize sugar in the body when you eat it, to the point where eventually it just gives up. And ashwagandha seems to stimulate that again, so it starts to work again. You do that, combine it with really good stomach probiotics, and I've seen people with type two diabetes make remarkable recoveries. Do do, do people with type two diabetes know that? It's not necessarily a life sentence, right? That you can do things to greatly enhance and correct type two diabetes. Type one, not so much, because that tends to be something that you're you're born with. That you know, it, it's one of those conditions right from birth. But type two diabetes, don't give up. You can actually take control of your own health, and you can start to do things to really control it. Right? Of course, if you're getting any sort of treatment from your doctor, don't go off that treatment. And you should discuss herbal treatments with your doctors. There are many aware doctors these days. I mean, my husband at the moment is being um, been seen a couple of times for his blood pressure medic um, by a, not his regular doctor. He's seen an Indian doctor. But he's been able to discuss a lot of Ayurvedic treatments with this doctor because this doctor is aware of alternative medicine in his country because in India, alternative medicine isn't so alternative. And ashwagandha comes from the Ayurvedic system, which is Indian. And then in India, you know, you will study, you can study Ayurveda as part of your, your medical course. So they understand the effect of, of herbs on the human system. Many doctors do. Um, if you're receiving thyroid uh, medication, thyroxin and things like that, before you start ashwagandha, please discuss this with your doctor because it depends what levels and what doses he's using the thyroxin to either push it up or down because the ashwagandha 
will then try and correct what the medicine is that he's giving you about which way is, is pushing you. But if in the early stages of thyroid dysfunction, ashwagandha can prove very effective and very useful in enhancing your life around that. Am I being, you know, using all the correct terms, am I being politically correct? Because, you know, I'm not allowed to uh, prescribe anything. But I can tell you what the studies have said. I can tell you what I've seen other people do when they self uh, prescribe these things and I can certainly tell you what's happened for me. Ashwagandha really is one of those things that is a godsend and it's so good that it's finally starting to come into Western, herb Western herbal medicine. So this is what ashwagandha, this is ashwagandha grains. I'll try and hold it closer to the screen so you can see it. I know the screen doesn't always focus but these the little that's the grains of the root the active part of the ashwagandha is the root of the plant and that's the problem with a lot of these tablets is the tablets will some, sometimes say leaves and flowers oh, but the leaves and flowers aren't the active part it's the root the root is the active part that has the active ingredient in a, in a healer and he will not only tell you to use the right part of the plant he will also tell you to use plants grown in a particular area in a particular way getting a particular amount of sunshine and then he might even say just use the bark on one side so this is the ashwagandha that we sell so i have the powder and i have the grains the grains is great to make a tea out of right the powder is good to put in your food so if you're a lady who cooks for her family or a gentleman who cooks for a family and you've got teenage children you can put the ashwagandha in the evening meal or in the the meals that you prepare and you'll find a great relief your your child will have a great relief if your husband is busy and he's having hormonal issues you can put it in the food it doesn't negatively affect anybody all it does is it brings back that balance so if you're not having a hormonal extreme ashwagandha essentially doesn't affect you right of course with all things i don't recommend that pregnant ladies or breastfeeding ladies take it especially because Pregnancy and breastfeeding are so dependent on your hormonal cycles. So you don't want to take this. Although people who have been trying to fall pregnant with an infertility that, have, that has been hormonally based have found that this has worked quite well for them to help restore their hormonal cycles. Amazing stuff. All right. So with this one, this is my favorite way of taking it because I like to have it as a tea. I, you can just put a few grains in the bottom of a cup. They float for a while and then sink to the bottom. And it's got such a mild, mild flavour. It's, it's really hardly detectable. Um, I actually quite like that mild flavour. It's, it's a little bit dusty. It's, got, it's more of a slight aroma, but not a bad aroma. Um, and if you'll, I found when I uh, very first, with my onset of, of menopause, I used to just put a few grains in a cup. Um, it also worked really well for my um, monthly migraines that I used to get. I found if I had this just before the time of my monthly migraines, while I was still had my menstruation cycle, it would actually help me not get those migraines. And I got the big corona ones that block out your vision. So those sorts of things, these are brilliant for. People with acne can actually make a face wash or they can actually get the powder, the fine powder, and just rub it on the acne and it helps bring it. Um, we've found, uh, had people who have had um, hormonal dermatitis, right? If they have that eczema on their hands or somewhere on their body, they'll just get the powder and just rub it lightly on and just leave it. It does make the skin a little bit dry, but it, this doesn't appear to be a bad thing. Right? Especially if the, the eczema starts to clear up. Anyway, with all herbal things, right, you must try them for yourself. Everybody's body chemistry is slightly different, right, and there is no single fix cure for everybody, right. Some people will find that a little bit is good and that's enough. Some people will find that they'll have to use a little bit more. Uh, I have some workmen who are battling with different male hormonal situations and they just take some of the powder, they sprinkle it on their subway for lunch and that's enough for them every day. Right? But generally with hormonal things, you want to keep a level in the system for you know, at least one of your hormonal cycles if you're trying to correct something. So that means 
try and keep it in there at least three times a day and a little bit more often is much better than a lot once a day so this is what I would like you to do if you'd like to win we're going to give away one packet of powder and one packet of the grains for the tea so if you'd like to win a, a packet what I would like you to do is in the comments below just write something that you would like to use it for something that you feel it may work with this also gives us a chance to discuss it with you um, people who have used ashwagandha before who are listening to this you can certainly comment uh, and the sharing of information about herbal medicines is a brilliant way to go as with everything i always tell people to have a look the research is out there uh, it is easy for most of us to be able to access um, studies that are on PubMed and the studies on PubMed when you look at the research about ashwagandha the studies are like oh my god why didn't somebody tell us about this years ago because the results when they do the studies are quite astounding so do your own research never believe anything that somebody just tells you for, for telling sake you must always check your information and then see how that works for you how it fits with you all right this is what being in, in control of your own health is all about. We must never allow the ability to be able to work with our own health be taken away from us and be relegated to somebody in authority who's bringing down um, rulings for an, with an agenda for, a, you know, so many studies get backed by drug companies these days. They're funded by drug companies with a vested interest in a particular result. So we don't want a ruling made on a study with a vested interest to be placed arbitrarily on us. We want to be able to retain that right to be in charge of our own health, right? And with a lot of things, I mean, most people who know me know that I haven't been sick as long as they've known me. So I haven't been to a doctor apart from minor accidents for over 10 years. Uh, because I maintain my health, I take responsibility for it, I'm safe and I don't get flus, I don't get sick. I travel all over the world, I don't get vomiting, I don't get diarrhea, I, don't, I eat the local food. Um, yeah, it's not, I've had people go, oh yeah, that's just because you get used to the bugs in the local area. No, I'm quite a, quite a traveller. Alright my love, so ashwagandha, so that's what we're talking about today. So we have the powder and the grains. So tell me below if you think you'd prefer the powder or the grains, what you would like to use it for and how you would like to use it. The best answers will win a packet of either grains or the powder free and I'll post that to you. So comment below, let me know how, if you've used it before, I'd love to hear how it's worked for you. We've had so many people that have used the ashwagandha and they're still using it and have had brilliant results. So share that with other people below so that they can see how it worked for you, not just that it did. Uh, these days, uh, research, you know, they used to go, oh, no, that's just anecdotal research. But these days, uh, universities are all using what they're call, calling crowd research, where they're getting people to uh, the bogon moth thing, you know, take a photo of the bogon moths in your area. Right? So they're starting to get an idea of where things are, right? But they're also putting things out and getting people in different groups to do control studies for them. Please take this for so many days and tell us the results. This is just another example of that. So go for it with your ashwagandha. If you'd like to win one, you know what to do. And stay tuned next Saturday. I'm, I'd love to share more herbal information with you. Um, traditional herbals is what I call it. I come from a, a lady who practiced a 20,000 year old herbal tradition uh, and it certainly seemed to have worked for most people for 20,000 years and haven't lost anybody yet. <laughs> yeah think about that you know it's something like in America there are a hundred thousand people die every year from medical malpractice. How many people die from herbal malpractice right i think since the 1970s there's been two in australia 
and one was because one of the herbs were contaminated with bacteria and that was the tryptophan which wasn't even a herb it was a refined tablet you know so look herbs can be dangerous you know most of our natural poisons do come from herbs right but we're not talking about something that's poisonous here anything can kill you right too much water can kill you if you drink it too fast you'll water down your bloodstream or if you submerge yourself in it <laughs> you'll drown so you know with all things use your common sense be balanced right and see if it works for you all right if you're interested and you're willing and you want to win a packet let me know down below um if you want to if you want to contact me about this uh, i'll put my phone number in the up the top there or just go to my website www.shadermonfin.com right, and send me a message all right my loves every blessing to you on your journey Mwah! be strong be healthy be joyful be happy see you next time